I'm delighted to be joined by former Peterborough United goalkeeper Joe Lewis. Uh, Joe, how are you doing? I'm good, thanks. Yeah, yeah, enjoying uh, a bit of time off, but obviously can't wait to get back to football again. I think everyone's a bit bored of this now, but um, obviously you have to um, follow the processes and, and hopefully get back to, to playing football in 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 uh, stadiums with plenty of fans in soon. Um, I wanted to talk to you about your your time at Posh. Um, obviously, you joined from uh, from Norwich for a club record at that time. Um, what can you remember about that move? Because you'd had loan moves um, to a number of clubs, I think, which obviously gave you first team experience. What can you remember about when Peterborough came a calling? Um, well, I'd um, I'd gone out on loan from Norwich um, the season before to Stockport for about four. I think I played four or five games just at the back end of the season. Um, and Jim Gannon was the manager there, um, and I was looking to get out on loan again. Um, there was it wasn't it wasn't realistic to be to be playing at Norwich at that time, I don't think. So um, I went on to Morecambe, and then probably I'd have I absolutely loved it there. Uh, six months there, had a really good time. A few injuries, a couple of little knocks, got a big scar on my head, twenty stitches in my head, and got an introduction to to league football really, um, and coming towards the end of that I had two uh, two in that six months two games my last game being against Peterborough mm -hmm. um, I, I think we I think we drew at Peterborough 1-1 um, or 0-0 potentially mm -hmm. and then I think we won at Morecambe against Peter. I think it was 2-1 possibly I had great games in both of them games um, and a really good six months really enjoyed it and I think obviously off the back of that um, signed for Peter. Um, I went back to Norwich for the for the for about a week, less than a week. Um, I think a bid a bid was made, and, and there's a few things. I, and I had a chat with um, the Norwich manager then, Glenn Roder, who um, just said, you know, it's a good, great opportunity for you. I had a chat with my family, and I made the move. Four and a, four and a half years contract, and, and 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 made the move, and 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 obviously. We had some great times. Yeah, was it a difficult decision to leave Norwich? I mean, obviously, when you have loan moves, it's you know relatively comfortable because you know you're going to go back to the club at the end of it. But with a permanent deal, obviously, it was a the next sort of chapter in your career. Did you feel it was the right time to, to do that? Um, to, you know, to, at the time, no, I, I didn't feel like it was. I think when you're young, I was a, I'm a Norwich fan, mm. um, still am, um, and coming through Norwich. In my head, all I ever wanted to do was play for Norwich, and outside for Norwich, play for Norwich, play for Norwich my whole career, retire in Norwich. That's and and that's that's probably the, the naive outlook I had on it. Um, and I got to say, where I was going out on loan, and I thought, oh, this is this is all part of my pro process towards getting into the Norwich first team uh, and establishing myself there. And then all of a sudden, that doesn't happen, and and uh, you know. The reality kicks in of you know it, it, very few footballers stay at one club, and um, and then you know you, 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 I found myself in a situation where there was a bit accepted for me just like that, um, no no talk of it, no build up of it, a uh, bit accepted, and then you have a few days to decide what you're going to do. Um, so you know it, it wasn't something I was probably looking back ready for or or. or you know, expecting that to have to make that decision. Mm. So, um, but I mean, it was um, when I sat down and thought about it, and, and you know, like, then realizing that my, my opportunities at Norwich were going to be limited. Um, there was there was no better move for me really in terms of Peterborough. Um, looking at it, not knowing anything about the, well, not knowing a lot about the club, um, but just looking at it from the outside before it's out there thinking a club that's ambitious, really um, positive, you know, a lot of good noises from, from, out, from coming from within the club in terms of their ambition um, at a level where I just played and done well, looking to push on and work my way through the leagues. It was perfect. Um, it was a perfect match, really. So, um, so yeah, it was. Um, I, I know. I know. Morecambe did all they could to try and. I mean, for a tiny little 
well, for a really small club, really, and a club that's probably um, really disrespectful to Morecambe, but it's, it's the, you know, to, to get, if they've got 3,000 3, fans, mm. so they're, 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 they're pleased, I think. Um, and they, they always, they've been struggling in, in League Two, and I think to be an established League Two, if they were to ever get promoted to League One, it would be incredible for them. Mm. Um, but they did it all they could to, they, to try and match the bid, I think. Um, I spoke to Sammy McElroy. Um, but that wouldn't have really been the move for me. That wouldn't, wouldn't have interested me. The project at Peterborough um, that Dar and Darren were sort of creating at the time was, um, was on, you know, very attractive. Mm. I think everyone remembers when, when you joined, a few people were talking about the fee because I think a lot of the players at that time had come from undisclosed fees, but the fee was always muted about of what, how much we were paying for you at the time. And, and quite a lot for a young goalkeeper, obviously, who hadn't had too much first team experience. Was that anything that preyed on your mind in terms of a fee or did you just think, well, you know, I'm not paying it, so it's nothing to do with me, really? It, it never, I never thought about that really. The, the fee, and I, I knew it was, it was, um, it was, it was strange. I never, you know, you, you never think of yourself as as having a, a financial value really. Um, and that was the first time you know you you, you sort of see a, a price put on you. Um, obviously, for I think at, um, at Peterborough, a lot of the supporters might have looked at that and thought because I mean, Tiles Tiles was was doing really well at Peterborough as well, and you know it's. It was tough on him, I thought, um, especially looking back, it was tough on him to be um, to be moved aside sort of thing almost for, 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 for a young lad who's, who's, like I say, played six months of football, first team football. Um, you know, look, looking at it from the outside now, looking back on it, um, you know, it would, it would have been tough on him um, and, you know, it was, it was big, big shoes to fill really for, you know, an absolute club legend. And uh, and a great guy, um, you know. It's you try not to um, get. You know, it's not. It's not. Nothing's personal ever in football. You need to try not to say anything. Anything personal. But you know, when you have got a great guy like him, who's been a tremendous servant, and and, and, you, and you coming in, taking his taking his shoot, filling, trying to fill his boots um, with a big fear on your head. I don't, I don't think it probably made my mind at all at, at the time. But you, you don't know subconsciously whether it was, you know, it was. Um, uh, a little bit, but I don't think it was. The, the fee didn't ever bother me or I didn't really think about that. It's quite weird, isn't it? Because with, with, with goalkeepers, you can come in, sign for a club, uh, take a person's place. They're never obviously going to play in any other position. And then you have to train with them pretty much day in, day out. You, you, yeah. you sort of, everything is confined as a goalkeeper because you, you work so much with that person. I guess it's, it's down to the professionalism of the, the people involved, isn't it? To make sure that you're pushing each other on. Well, there's there's no better guy to to for that to for me to have been with than Tiles for that. Um, he could have easily been bitter towards me. Felt like you know I just you know he'd done he'd been doing well and felt like I, I didn't I hadn't earned my spot or you know I, he was unbelievably supportive. Um, it helped me, you know. Actually, actually, he went out of his way to try and help me and and to to encourage me and to. Um, do all he, all he could really to, um, to 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 make me better as well. So um, him at Ellen Dibbs obviously was a coach, but Tiles was was um, was equally as helpful um, in a position where if, you know a lot of people would have been bitter and and I mean I've never really had it in goalkeepers. I mean goalkeepers tend to get along really well. But I've heard of, of of situations where they don't, and, and people think they should be playing or feel hard done by, and they sack off training and they don't really put put it in properly, and um, and that makes it so hard for the goalkeeper that is that is playing or whichever goalkeeper is starting to deal with that sort of um, that tension in training. You just don't need it really. So mm. you know, I'll, I'll always be grateful to to Tiles for. Um, the, the way he was with me and, and, and just the, the guy he is, really. Um, obviously, you, you had an, an immediate success, obviously, getting out of League Two into League One. Um, those players that you obviously played with, because you, you joined in January, I think, didn't you? You sort of came halfway yeah. through the season. Um, the dressing room was a, a real mixture of a lot of youth, 
a lot of sort of non-league players who are obviously trying to make their way in the game. And then obviously a bit of experience with people like Micah Hyde and um, Josh Lowe was around that time as well. Um, when you walked into that dressing room, did you think that it was quite a good blend of people to, to, to make a successful team? Yeah, it was my, it was probably my first, I was in the first team dressing room at Norwich, but in terms of being involved you know, in a first team, like playing squad and being one of the, uh, the people who was part of the, the team and feeling part of the team and looking back on that now, it was an unbelievable squad. You know, the, the, the mix and the blend of, of the youth and experience was, was perfect, uh, in my opinion. You know, you had uh, Westy, Keatsy, Micah Hyde, um, who else was the senior lads there? I'm trying to think. I mean, the the two main ones for me was was, was Westy and and Keatsy. Mm. Um, they they were old. They're old school. You know, they 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 come from a different sort of era to what us the young lads had, had just well me who just joined and Boydie and and Aaron and Craig and well, all all the young lads. There were so many young lads. We had, we had a, so many young lads at the, in the squad at the time. Um, and they, they were so important to sort of not, not keeping an eye on the young lads or they, they did keep, they, they kept us in check really. Um, and they, um, they were winners, you know, they, in tra they wouldn't accept anything less than a hundred percent in training. Um, but they were good guys as well. You 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 know you want to go for a drink with them. You 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 want to sit and chat with them at lunch or or, or um and we'd all we'd all socialise together. We'd all go we'd go around each other's houses for 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 dinner or whatever. Um, so it was it was a brilliant bunch. Um, but I would say Keatsy and Westy were two of the real um sort of main components of that. Mm. Having that experience, like you say, they'd keep. Jim in check, um, they keep, they, but they would uh, everyone. You know, if anyone was getting carried away, they'd soon bring him back down to earth, um, just with a bit of, you know, just a bit of banter or something like that. That would just bring the bring the person who's getting a bit carried away back down to earth. So um, they were so important to that to that squad, to that group, because um, we we had plenty of young, uh, exciting talent, um, but and that, and Westy and Keatsy had had the talent as well, and they were gifted footballers. Uh, in their own right, but they also had that mentality that they installed into into the team. I think. Yeah, obviously promotion from League Two was achieved at Hereford away, um, and um, I remember two things about that game. Obviously, Dean keeps his header, um, and getting soaked afterwards um, uh, by champagne on a cheap suit that I was wearing at the time, and I probably think that you were the protagonist at the time. Um, that that must have felt really good as a young player to go into a club. And get a promotion straight away, um, and to do it with a, a, a sort of, as you say, a, a real good blend in the dressing room. What was the celebrations like? Can you repeat any of what happened? Well, that, I mean, Hereford's not a short journey back either, is it? So that was a that was a good a good bus trip. That um, well, was, you know the celebrations were amazing, and that's that's what it's all for at the end of the day. The memories of of the celebrations and the good times you get off the back of that. Um, you know, I mean, just I just thinking about it now to sign for the club. I think we were, I think we, we weren't in the, we might have been third mm -hmm. when I signed, third or fourth, something like that. Um, games in hand, essentially, and, and looking good to get promoted. But I don't know, I just, when I signed, I just assumed, I was like, yeah, we'll sign, I will get promoted and, and, and we'll go up. And, and it just happened, everything just clicked. And, and, um, and like I say, that squad, the, the the good times we had, the celebrations and that sort of thing, that just, I think, stuck with us and it kicked on into the following season. And you see, obviously, we'll, have, we'll go into that obviously next, but um, it just seemed to flow. We had a great group, um, experience of young and old, and, and and all good lads as well. There wasn't there wasn't a bad egg amongst us. And I don't think Dan would have would would have seen that or would have accepted that anyway. Mm. Um, you know, I'm assuming by the by the group, by the type of players Darren has, has signed and and did sign then that he does his research on personalities as well. So um, it was it was important. Um, you know, the ability is you know just as important as, as the group and the attitude that you have within it. So 
that was a uh, yeah the celebrations was, was unbelievable and uh, yeah it was something I'll, I'll always remember. Uh, it's interesting as a goalkeeper, particularly as a young goalkeeper, when you go into a club and you're involved in a promotion push straight away, there's going to be a lot of pressure on everybody that's involved, particularly as a goalkeeper, because ultimately, as you know, if you make a mistake as a goalkeeper, there's not much you can do about it, as my experience in five side will tell me. Um, uh, did, you, did you feel any pressure at that? Or were you a kind of goalkeeper that thought, OK, if I make a mistake, that happens, I can get back on the bike? Did it affect you mentally at all at that age? I, uh, it, so... Now, I think I deal with mistakes a lot better. Um, I would say as, as, as many good times as I had at Peterborough, and I had so many um, um, unbelievable experiences, um, and I loved my time there. I also probably went through the toughest time um, yeah, of my career, definitely. Um, you know, not, I mean, not of my life, you know, but um, you know, you have de deaths in your family and stuff like that, which obviously come come are more important and, and, and more. Uh, but in terms of mentally, I would say that leave one season was was really tough for me. Um, I, I, I there were certain games I, I was going to just just dreading the game, just not not enjoying it. Yeah, you know, we were winning games, we we got promoted, mm. um, we were successful, but I I I was made I made. A, more than a few mistakes that season. Um, had a had one run of really poor games, um, and just had was going into games with just zero confidence. Um, I think nowadays I'm probably learning from that sort of experience. I deal with that much better now, um, and thankfully, you know, at the time at Aberdeen, um, I've made you know very few mistakes, and I've, and I've probably. Um, I'm a much better goalkeeper now, probably than well, not much better. I've, I, I've always felt like I had uh, the ability, but um, probably mentally, I don't think I was I was right fully. Um, certainly not to deal with the mistakes that that, that I that I made. And um, Darren Ferguson was definitely um, unbelievably supportive to me through uh, through what was a tough time for me. Um, so it was, um, yeah, it was, I think I would have been, I would have been 22 mm. um, and probably physically ready, ability ready, uh, mentally didn't, didn't deal with, with mistakes well enough. Um, and that showed probably in, in parts of my form, mm. you know, I, uh, I had some really good spells, some really good games and I'd make, make a mistake and on the back of that, it would affect my confidence too much really and it would uh it would affect the, the, the following couple of games and yeah. i'd have to sort of get my way through that um it helped that the team was winning a lot of the games and we got promoted through that and um i think after that season um certainly it definitely uh you know looking back on that that, that was a, a real key season in my career where i'll probably learn and i'm the most of the most out of any season i've had um, obviously, it wasn't, it wasn't the whole season of having nightmares, but um, uh, and I thought, you know, it, we got promoted, so I obviously wasn't that bad. But, but <laughs> I had some, uh, some a, a few standout mistakes that were just um, just glaring errors from a goal, goalkeeper, which um, nothing to, to do with ability, because I felt like I've, I had the ability. I've, I've shown since certainly since I've been playing up here that. The ability I've got the the the, te the technical ability. It was it was a mental thing that I was I really struggled with, um, but got my got I'm um, you know got through it and um, and you know we got promoted, which was you know another great achievement for the, for the club to get back to back promotions was was incredible. Yeah, let's uh, fast forward to the semi final at MK Dons uh, away. Uh, we've watched that back in, in its entirety quite recently and. Um, uh, three things that spring to mind obviously I haven't watched it back is one how good we were in the first 20 minutes after scoring but not building on it secondly the amount of injuries that just uh, occurred throughout the throughout the team and obviously the the, um, the sending off of, of Charlie which actually probably was a bit unjust after having watched it back in terms of the two tackles from your point of view you actually got injured remarkably early in that game um, and it was as, as, as a watcher, you, I, I just presumed it was a knock, and I think most people did as well. Um, how 
what can you remember about the injury and how on earth did you manage to stay there for as long as you did? Well, I, I, it's, it's, I remember really clearly. I came sliding out and Charlie's gone to clear, clear the ball, come sliding towards me to clear the ball and we've clashed knees. And when you, clap, when you bang your knee, your kneecap on anything, table in the living room or it, you knock it in football, whatever, it's always really painful. Now this was more than that, <laughs> you know, it was unbelievable, it was incredibly painful when I did it. Um, but I just assumed it was, it was a bad case of a, a clash of knees mm. um, because it's not a, a, what, I have, what I got was not a common injury in the end. But, so I just thought that's unbelievably painful. I just try and run it off or jog it off or let the, let the, 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 a few minutes go past and, and, it, and it'll go away. And it, and it was just getting worse and worse. And, the, and uh, I, I, I can't remember how long I was down for, but I've really been down for a good amount of time. And then I, I took the, um, I think I took, took the, 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 the subsequent goal kick or whatever it was, or was there, I think maybe a corner followed it. And it went, it went out for maybe a goal kick. I took the goal kick and the, the pain was incredible, but, um, it was a playoff semi-final, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't, coming off didn't feel like an option, you know, so um, I looked down, you know, a few minutes, I was hobbling around, looked down after a couple of minutes and, and it started to swell quite a bit. So, um, swelling is obviously not a good, a good sign straight away. So um, I was trying to signal to the, the physio, who was obviously looking over, could see I was in, in pain. And he bought he bought around some ibuprofen <laughs> and some paracetamol. So I took them um, for what good they did uh, and kept you know, just just made do. But the, the pain was getting incredible in my right my right knee. Um, and it, I mean, thankfully there was no shots to my right hand side. I, I, I wouldn't have been able to get to dive to my right. Anything you know, even a yard to my right hand side, I, I wouldn't have saved. There's no no chance I would, I would physically be able to. To my left, I would have I would have done the, the best I could try and do, but um, so I got I got to half time and it had swelled it was swollen quite a lot and Darren's a difficult man to tell that you want to come off but you need to come off. Um, but you know, I, didn't, I still I still didn't know what was wrong, and uh, Pete Pete the physio was trying to was strapping it up and I just couldn't put any weight on it at all. But he put a bandage on and was like. You're gonna be alright. You're gonna be alright. I looked at him. I thought, Are "You kidding me?" Like, <laughs> um, I just couldn't step. I could not put any weight on it at all. Just couldn't do it. Uh, I'd taken about four goal kicks with it since the injury, which hadn't helped. Um, and I just, I just can't do it as much. I, I, I never ever like want to come off in in things to come off, especially in a big game like that. Um, 